amendment be agreed to? And I now give the call to the member for Denison. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, the federal government's decision to stop the super trawler operating in Australian waters for up to two years um, is, I believe, a very significant and a very positive development. I applaud the government uh, and the environment minister in particular uh, for finally acting in this matter. <clears throat> Deputy Speaker, the case against the super trawler is, in my opinion, overwhelming. Uh, for a start, there are doubts over the science. Now, can I say up front, I have enormous respect for the Australian scientific community and for the work that it does. And I'm very mindful of the fact that in my electorate I have a disproportionate number of uh, marine scientists and fisheries experts, in fact one of the highest uh, population of such people pro rata of any city in the country. But the fact is that the opinions among or the, opi the views in the scientific community uh, are divided and there is not a, a clear consensus one way or other in this matter. For example, in Tasmania, our own Dr Andrew Wadsley has done some very good work uh, picking apart the science behind the quota and has found many errors. Um, further afield, um, Professor Jessica Maywig, um, who is uh, a research professor at the University of Western Australia, she's had this to say, uh, and I'll quote her, um, but we are largely ignorant about the effective population structure of these species. Of the four species considered for exploitation, the population structure of blue mackerel is uncertain, and jack mackerel and red bait are believed to have eastern and western subpopulations. No dedicated population studies have been conducted on red bait, nor is any information available for Peruvian jack mackerel. Moreover, little, reported, little is reported about adult movements of any of these species, except that larger jack mackerel are found in deeper waters. So that's one opinion from a very highly regarded Western Australian professor. Um, and if I can quote again, this time from a friend of mine from Hobart, a fellow called John Biggs, uh, and he wrote this morning um, in an online blog comment, and I'll quote him, science's role is to provide the information on which policy can be made. Its role is not to create policy. Policy makers certainly need to take the science into account, which means they are satisfied it is fully up to date. But policymakers also need to take into account a range of other factors, including the opinions of the public who elected them. Science may tell us what can happen, but that doesn't mean to say it should happen. And in any case, the science here is focused on a specific species, not the whole ecosystem. It's out of date and statistically wrong, according to Dr. Wadsley and others. End of quote. Deputy Speaker, there are also doubts in my opinion, over the effectiveness of the government's safeguards, and in particular the promise of an observer on board the super trawler at Margiris. Um, and I say that there, was a, that there is a doubt, or now was a doubt, because the government is in fact moving to replace fishing observers with electronic monitoring to save money through the Fisheries Legislation Amendment Bill No. 1, which passed this House in August and is now before the Senate. Now, the government uh, variously described the conditions it had imposed uh, on the Margiris as uh, tough, stringent and best practice, but the reality is that the con key condition of an onboard observer uh, was nothing more than a facade. Introducing that bill, Parliamentary Secretary Sid Sidebottom told Parliament, if I can quote uh, uh, the member for Braddon, uh, trials and cost-benefit analyses have shown that the more data that is required for a fishery, the cheaper it will become to use e-monitoring systems rather than observers. Deputy Speaker, there's also the doubts about the risk of localised stock depletion. And this, in fact, is one of the most important reasons that a single large vessel is much more problematic than, number, than a number of smaller boats filling the same quota. Deputy Speaker, I suggest it is self-evident that one very large vessel with one very large net going into a relatively small fishery will have a disproportionate effect compared to a smaller number of vessels, probably operating across a broader area, um, uh, by comparison. Deputy Speaker, one of the other problems about the super trawl at Margiris, and I'll call it Margiris because I think the renaming of Abel Tasman was downright offensive, particularly to the Tasmanian community. One of the other problems with the super troll of Margiris was that it had no social licence. 
Very few Tasmanians in particular wanted the vessel, which is not at all surprising, Deputy Speaker, considering there are well over 100,000 uh, recreational fishermen and fisherwomen and fisher children uh, in Tasmania out of a population of only half a million. And I understand that elsewhere in Australia there are similar levels of concern uh, with the super trawler and with super trawlers. Um, and this is very important. Uh, we in this House should represent our communities. Uh, and it's too easy to simply say, well, some government agency at, at arm's length knows more and will disregard the view of the community. That's not our job, and we shouldn't do that. And it should only be done in extreme circumstances, and it shouldn't have been done in this case. Um, Deputy Speaker, there's also the, there has also been the problem about the misconduct of the Australian Fisheries Management Authority when it set the quota relevant to the Margiris. Um, for example, the outcomes of the resource set, now these are AFMA advisory committees I'm about to refer to. Um, for example, the outcomes of the resource assessment group, which met in February, um, weren't accu accurately recorded and the concerns about sustainability by at least two members of the resource assessment group uh, were not communicated um, up the chain to the management advisory committee. And we know that because the concerns of at least two members of that committee are now on the public record. Um, their concerns went to um, what is called the South East Management Advisory Committee. And we know that in its meeting in March, the key meeting when the recommendation for the quota relevant to the Super Trawler Margiris was finalised, we know that the committee did not comply with the Fisheries Administration Act during that committee meeting. Uh, we know that uh, the proponent for the Super Trawler, Mr Jerry Geen of Seafish Tasmania, a man with a direct conflict of interest, remained in that meeting, which in my opinion was, in was entirely uh, improper, but it was allowable so long as the committee had given him explicitly approval to remain in that meeting, and they did not. Uh, and when I challenged the CEO of the Australian Fisheries Management Authority about this, remarkably the CEO of AFMA said that AFMA does not take its act literally, that in fact it has developed in-house workaround arrangements because it has difficulties with the act. Well, I've taken these concerns to the Ombudsman, and I'm pleased to, uh, pleased to say, pleased to know that the Ombudsman feels there is enough substance to my concerns about the conduct of AFMA that, in fact, uh, it is currently investigating the Australian Fisheries Management Authority, in particular its conduct um, regarding the setting of the quota relevant to the Super Trawler Margiris. Deputy Speaker, finally, there's also the question mark, or a question mark, over the big, what I'll call the big picture. And the fact that AFMA blocked the Super Trawler Veronica in 2005 with the support of the Howard government. And that's, in fact, at about the same time the proponents for the Super Trawler Margiris commenced their work. Well, so what, might you ask, uh, Deputy Speaker? Well, the so what is that the proponent for the Margiris, Mr Jerry Goon, was on at least one of the AFMA advisory committees in 2005 when AFMA blocked the Veronica. And if that doesn't raise more questions about all of this and about the conduct of AFMA, and that there is indeed a genuine question mark over whether or not, uh, at least a question mark over whether or not uh, a super trawler should operate in Australian waters. If that doesn't uh, raise serious questions, then I don't know what will. Now, Deputy Speaker, I am not saying that Mr Goon has done anything wrong in these matters. I am not saying that. In fact, I am very concerned, genuinely concerned, that Mr Goon has been allowed to do a lot of work, to spend a lot of money and to give employees a lot of hope when his expectations really should have been cut short long ago, either by the Howard government or the Rudd government or earlier, much earlier, by the Gillard government. Now, my issue here is with what I'll broadly describe as fisheries management in Australia and the fact that far too many people with direct conflicts of interest are allowed to occupy key advisory bodies. Remember, Mr Goon from Seafish Tasmania, the proponent for the Super Trawler Margiris, was heavily involved with AFMA when a competitor vessel, Veronica, was stopped, and he was again heavily involved more recently when the quota relevant to the Margiris was set. And surely, surely, Deputy Speaker, this is entirely improper of AFMA, and it shouldn't be allowed to continue. Now, from here, Deputy Speaker, I urge the government 
to move quickly. And I urge my crossbench colleagues to support the government um, to turn yesterday's announcement into law as quickly as possible. And I also urge the government to ensure this two-year assessment process, which has been identified, is done um, effectively and is absolutely beyond question. And I also urge the government, given all of the uncertainty now over the setting of the quota relevant to the Super Trawler Margiris, that that quota is in, is in fact revoked and not allowed to be fished by any other vessel in the interim. Now, regrettably, I would, I would also add, Deputy Speaker, I, I think while the government's announcement yesterday is, a, is to be applauded, and I do applaud it, I do believe it could have gone much further. And ultimately, I will be supporting an amendment I expect to be moved by the member for Melbourne that would seek to ban super trawlers permanently. Um, and if I could quote from a, a um, Greenpeace fact sheet, just some of the issues we need to consider when thinking about um, toughening up the government's bill and, in fact, to ban super trawlers permanently. Remember the super trawler Margiris, 142 metres long, twice the size of any vessel that has fished Australian seas uh, previously. Um, six times longer uh, than the average Australian fishing vessel. Um, a vessel that can catch, and this is a typical super trawler, can catch up to 250 tonnes of fish a day, or process, I should say, 250 tonnes of fish a day, and can store 6,200 tonnes of fish before it has to return to, fort, uh, to port. This is fishing on an industrial scale never before seen in Australia, and nor should it be and fishing on such a scale that there is an enormous bycatch and kills a large number of very precious animals. For example, uh, in the past 15 years, um, bycatch from the 20 super trawlers fishing off West Africa have killed an estimated 1,500 critically endangered turtles, more than 18,000 giant rays and more than 60,000 sharks. Um, and not only are they destroying these precious animals, they're destroying jobs because super, uh, super trawlers are inherently machinery intensive and um, a personnel light. Um, they are a job killer, not a job creator. Um, and they have done enormous damage around the world where they've been allowed to operate. For example, they collapsed the South Pacific fishery. Still quoting from the uh, Greenpeace fact sheet here. Scientists said there were so many jack mackerel in the South Pacific that the fishery was impossible to overfish. But super trawlers, including the Margiris, fished so much that in 2006 the Pacific fishery collapsed to 10 per cent of healthy stocks. Fisheries managers are now calling for fishing to be cut by half, with some scientists arguing for a five-year total ban in that fishery. Um, they have also wiped out, effectively, West Africa's commercial fish stocks. Since super trawlers, again including the Margiris, started fishing off the west coast of Africa, most commercial fish stocks have become um, fully exploited or overexploited. In other words, there are effectively no more fish for commercial fishing. And that's what super trawlers have done in recent years in other parts of the world. Frankly, Deputy Speaker, it should be up to the proponents for such vessels to prove to, prove to us that they are environmentally and economically sensible rather than this current situation, which I fear we still have, where it's up to the government to prove such vessels are inappropriate. And I do believe, Deputy Speaker, that if we were to amend the government's bill uh, and to ban super trawlers, and by putting in place such a permanent ban uh, would put the onus on any future proponent of a super trawler to make a strong enough case to convince a future government to change the law. It shouldn't be for us having to work out how to say no. The onus has to be reversed. It should be up to the proponents for super trawlers to convince us that um, they've changed their ways, that things are better in the future. It should be up to a future proponent of a super trawler, if they want to uh, have one operate in Australian waters, to have to persuade a future government to change the law to allow it. Um, Deputy Speaker, I'll wind it up there. I, I do finish by saying yesterday's news um, was great news. It was great news for a great many Australians, um, certainly the overwhelming majority of Tasmanians that, I've, uh, that I'm aware of. Uh, I do applaud the government for doing it. I do call on my crossbench colleagues to understand that um, the government's bill should be supported, and the issue of science is a fair point. But remember, there is uh, uncertainty even within the scientific community. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Thank you, Mayor.